Grace Revival Church, Gong Hei Fat Choi, Happy Chinese New Year to everyone. I wish you all a great time celebrating with your family in this next few days with lots of fun and a supernatural supply of yummy rice cake and carrot cake with zero calories. Amen. But so good to have you in our service today, the year of supernatural supply. 
Amen. And today, Pastor Wayne will be sharing another powerful message that will bless you and help you receive God's abundant supply. Have your amens if you're excited for that. Be virtually vocal. We just love it when you are. Also, church, we will be partaking of the Holy Communion. So please prepare your communion elements there with you. And to those joining us for the first or second time, we warmly welcome you. We love that you're able to join us today. If you are interested to know more about our church, the things that are regularly happening, Pastor Wayne writes a daily devotional that we send through email. We also have connect groups running regularly that you can be planted in and grow in your walk with the Lord. Lastly, we have our midweek faith booster happening every Wednesday on Zoom, where we pray together as a church and hear a faith boosting message from our senior pastor, Pastor Wayne, and some of our leaders. If you want to know more details about these, just contact us and our team would be happy to assist you. Now church, our worship team is about to lead us into a time of worship. Let's just open our hearts to God right now. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free. a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. We are freed from everything in this world. We are freed from sickness. We are freed from poverty. We are free from all our sins because of what He has done for us. We are still here today because of what He has done for us. We are still here today because of Jesus. We are children of God. We are royalty. We seat in heavenly places with Him, with Jesus. So let's just sing to Him. I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen not forsaken 
Let's just give Jesus all praise and glory right now. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Church, this is a new year, this is a new day, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. His steadfast mercy and loving kindness are new every morning, and His faithfulness never comes to an end. So rejoice and give thanks. I say rejoice and give thanks. We can rejoice and give thanks at all times because we are not on our own. We have a God who is big enough, mighty enough, and faithful enough. A God who is good, who loves us unconditionally, who gave His all for us so we could truly live. A God who died for us, for our sins, and who doesn't bring up our sins against us anymore. Who is not limited by what we can do for Him. A God whose resources and supply are not limited by the economy of this world, who moves and functions outside of time and space. So let's get rid of mindset that says, well, I just seem to be always failing. Oh, well, my record shows this has always been the farthest I can go. Well, it seems like every year about this time, sickness comes into our house. That's your previous experience. That was last year for you. It doesn't have to be this year. What has happened in your past must not limit you. Doesn't the Bible say, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away and old things are become new. Forget about what the record shows. Stop thinking, this is the limit of how far I can go. This is the limit of how much money I can make. This is my ceiling. There is no ceiling with God. There is no salary cap with the Lord. There is no drought in His heavenly economy. There is always a surplus of everything. And God says, Look, I can do exceeding abundantly beyond all that you can ask or think. He can feed you with more than enough. He can bless you and prosper you. He can preserve miraculously what He has given you. He can multiply. He can restore double. He did it in the past as the Bible recorded, and He has no problem doing it again and again and again. So start asking. Start having this big expectation of God and start thinking in the Spirit rather than looking in the natural. Amen? His Spirit that is in you supplies you with His love, peace and joy, strength, health and wholeness, favor and success. Amen? Church, let's partake of the Holy Communion right now and let's just thank Jesus and see His grace at the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for your cross. We see your body being whipped for our healing. 
all your bones broken, your skin ripped off, your organs crushed and damaged. Lord, you went through all of that because you loved us and wanted us healed. You suffered so we don't have to suffer from any cancer, arthritis, heart illness, eye or skin disease, free from any sickness and disease. Lord, your sacrifice is never in vain. The body that we have right now, we believe and we receive is healthy and rejuvenated, youthful and blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake. Thank you, Jesus. We see our sins punished at the cross. We see your blood spilled all over. Lord, we may fail at times, but thank you that how you see us remains the same. We are as righteous as Jesus is. Father, we receive afresh today your forgiveness and your favor that brings a manifestation of your spiritual blessings in our day-to-day -day lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. God bless you.
Jesus, oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus, oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus, oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in Hello, Church. Gong Hei Fa Choi. Happy New Year of the Rabbit. If you are married and praying and asking God for a baby or babies, I think there is a reason why this is the Rabbit Year because rabbits do reproduce and multiply very quickly and very abundantly. And this is what the Lord says in Genesis seventeen six: "I will make you exceedingly fruitful." Even if you are single, or you are a youth, or you already have a family with a few children, the Lord still wants to bless you and make you fruitful and multiply all areas of your life. An exceedingly fruitful in the original Hebrew text is meot, meot, which means abundant, great, even force. And in Hebrew, when a word is repeated twice. It is to emphasize and confirm the meaning. The C3 GRC Grace Revival Church. God is saying to you, He will make you exceedingly great, exceedingly blessed, and exceedingly fruitful. Amen. And when you have time, I encourage you to read the Abraham story. It is actually quite funny. So when God told Abraham about the promise of his son, Genesis seventeen seventeen says that then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and he said in his heart, "Shall a child be born to a man who is one hundred years old, and shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child?" Everyone says, "Ha ha ha!" <laughs> It was so funny. Abraham laughed so hard that he fell off his chair. In Genesis 18, when God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit visited Abraham and told him about the promise again, Sarah was eavesdropping behind the tent. She also laughed. Genesis 18:12 says, "Then Sarah laughed within herself, saying, 'After I've grown old.'" Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Everyone says, "Ha ha ha!" You see, Abraham and Sarah heard the word of God, the precious promise for their lives. And guess what? It's not a joke. It's funny, almost outrageous and ridiculous because it is so impossible. But Abraham and Sarah believed it. And they celebrated and served God with the most beautiful steak dinner to thank Him. Church, as you celebrate this Chinese New Year, let me encourage you to celebrate with the Lord. Bring Him your best. Serve Him with your best. Celebrate with Him and bring your tithes and offerings. And one more important note, I believe. Abraham and Sarah took some actions upon the word of God to give birth to their son Isaac. Whether it is for a baby, for your marriage, for your family, for your studies, for your job, or for your businesses, take the actions that you need to take and thank God for His exceedingly great fruitfulness for you. Let me pray for you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are always with us. We declare that in this new year of the rabbit, you are going to make us so fruitful, and we will have fun. And we speak your exceedingly great fruitfulness upon every person, every couple, every family, and we bring our best to thank you and celebrate with you in Jesus' name. And everyone says, "Ha ha ha!" Amen. God bless you, church. 
Coming up, please enjoy the message by Pastor Wayne, the supernatural supply of the Lord. Hi, Grace Revival Church. I want to welcome all the visitors. Kung Hee Fat Choi. Happy Chinese New Year. I hope you all have an enjoyable and a safe week traveling and meeting with family and meeting with friends. Amen. Mary and I, we've now been in Hong Kong for over 12 years and we're entering into our 13th year. So in the Chinese calendar, we're back to the year of the rabbit. Now, I'm not a superstitious person at all. Why put trust in man-made idols and superstitions when you can actually put your trust in the living God. Amen. We are in the year of supernatural supply, not the year of a rabbit. The Lord your God, he wants to reveal something about himself to you this year, that he's a God who wants to bring supernatural supply into your life. Yes, we live in the natural and provision. It flows to us through the supply channels of the natural world. But God, he is not limited by this natural world. Amen. Even in times of famine and times of destruction and times of tragedy, the Lord, he can bypass the natural channels of this world and bring provision supernaturally into your life. Can I have a good amen, church? Jesus, he turned water into wine. That would take 25 years to produce in the natural. Jesus calmed the storm and he healed the sick. He fed 5,000 men with just five loaves and two small fish. Isaac sowed in a time of famine, and he reaped a hundredfold in the same year. Church, the Lord, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And he can bring supernatural provision into your life. You know, every year we seek the Lord for a word for that year. And last year it was the year of an open door. And each new word, it's the Lord revealing something about his goodness and his love for us. And the word that he gave us for this year, it's so, so special. Even though the natural resources of the world may run dry through economic downturn and pandemics and pestilence and wars and famine, losses and inflation, God is able. Amen, church. I want you to say it. God is able. Come on, one more time. God is able to supply super abundantly more than we can ask or think according to his power that is at work within us. That's Ephesians 3 verse 20. Church, 2023, it's a year of supernatural supply for our church. Amen. Why don't we just play that video again that we played a couple of weeks ago. Let's play it now. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the folds. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. Church, the resources and supply channels of the world may be running dry, economic downturn, pandemics and pestilence, wars and famine, losses and inflation, but God is able to supply super abundantly more than we can ask or think, more than our greatest prayers, more than our greatest hopes, and more than our greatest dreams, according to His power at work within us. Church, there is a river. It's a pure river of life. It's clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It yields its fruit every month. It offers healing for the nation. It's a river that only blesses and never curses. As the world grows darker and darker, the church will become brighter and brighter. As the world's resources run dry, the river of life continually brings its life, its fruit, its healing, its blessing and abundance. It's a supernatural supply. It's not dependent on the natural supply channels of this world. It's an unlimited supply. It continues to yield fruit and healing every month. It's the abundant life of the Lamb. It's the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the healing and prosperity of the Lord. My God shall supply all your needs, GRC, Grace Revival Church, according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's according to His riches, His glory, His goodness, 
his mercies, his grace, his abundance, and his supernatural supply. Amen. 2023 is the year of the supernatural supply of the Lord. Amen. What an amazing video. Church, the Lord, he wants you to see him as your source and your supply. Amen. He is your good shepherd. He supplies every need so that there is no lack in any area of your life. He doesn't want you to become dependent on yourself. He doesn't want you to be dependent on the world. Both of these are temporal and they can run dry, but the supernatural provision and the supply of God, it never runs dry. Amen? It never runs dry. The supernatural supply of God, it comes through the grace of God. God's grace is the supply of God. That's one easy way to remember it. Grace is the unmerited, unearned, undeserved goodness and favor of God coming towards you. But a simple way to always perceive and, and think of grace, it is the supply of God, the supply of his favor, the supply of his goodness coming to you through the Spirit of God. Amen. The law, another way of saying the law in, in, the, in the 21st century is self-effort. That's where uh, you're, 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 the, the law actually demands from you. And it calls you to demand something upon yourself. If you want something, well, it's up to you to go and get it. It's up to you to do it for yourself. See, we, we, we exist in two kingdoms, church. It's either the kingdom of the world, which is the natural world, or the kingdom of God, which is the supernatural world. The kingdom of this world operates by the supply or the shortfall of natural resources. The kingdom of God operates by the unlimited supernatural supply of God. And everything in the kingdom of God is based on spirit through your ability to believe. That's what we call faith. Faith is the bridge between the natural world and the spiritual world. The only way you can receive and access anything, every good gift that belongs to you, every spiritual blessing from the heavenlies is by faith. Amen. Everything in this world, well, it's based on your head, based on your natural reasoning. and you know what? You'll never be able to satisfy your head. And your head will always want to dominate you, will always try to dominate you. And it will just continue to ask and ask and ask all these questions that will never fully be satisfied. The spirit, oh, the spirit is always dealing in the supernatural. It deals in this unlimited supply of God. It is endless. It is infinite. The infinite supply of God in your head, it will never completely understand the spirit realm. Your head can't understand infinite or infinity. It, it, it also struggles with this concept of faith. It, it will always want these answers. And even the more you try to give it these answers, it will never be satisfied. It will always interpret things based on its own preferences, its own prejudices, its own limited understanding. And that's because the head can only operate in the realm of this natural world. Your head will try to dominate your spirit, but the spirit is the real you. And it needs to lead the head. An unrenewed mind, that's what I'm talking about when I say your head. It's this unrenewed mind. It will never, never want to follow the spirit. The head will always want to lead. The unrenewed mind, it will only accept things in terms of the natural world and natural reasoning and, and what the five senses are telling it. And if you live in accordance with just your head, with this unrenewed mind, you'll never, never see the supernatural supply of God flowing into your life because it's by faith. You need to train that head of yours. You need to train your thinking to follow the lead of your spirit and agree with what the word of God says. That's what we call a renewed mind. Romans 12, 2 talks about don't conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's to the word of God. The word of God is life. The word of God is spirit. And as you're hearing and feeding, shama, shama, you keep hearing, you keep hearing the word of God. It becomes planted and established in the soil of your heart. It will produce faith on the inside of you. Amen. It's the life of faith. 
it's this belief in what God says over the natural world, over what your senses are telling you. You know, it's kind of interesting that, that your head won't accept the things of the spirit because you just can't understand them. Yet, the, the, the head accepts so many things in the natural world that it doesn't understand. The head seems to have no problems accepting why airplanes can fly. How big are they? And how heavy are they? Yet they can fly through the sky. And then huge ships made out of all this metal, they don't sink. My goodness. It's amazing how pictures and sounds can travel through the air and be captured by TVs and your iPhones. The universe is expanding at the speed of light. Yet the majority of us have absolutely no understanding of how all that works. But we struggle to believe in a creator God over a theory that everything in existence came from nothing. Came from that, a big fat donor, zero, zilch, nothing. It struggles to believe in a God. So it has to develop these elaborate, unbelievable theories that take so much more faith to believe than it does in a creator God. You know, the unrenewed mind, it is so selective. It chooses what it wants to believe and what it doesn't. To experience the supernatural supply of God, we have to train our minds to follow our spirits and trust in God. It's a renewed mind. It's a mind that is becoming renewed to the word of God. We have to trust in God more than we trust in man, more than we trust in money, more than we trust in this natural world. Amen. God wants to give you a quality of life. It's not just quantity, church. It's also quality. Look what it says in Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? In the last sentence, Jesus is saying that life is more than just material things, church. It's more than just the accumulation of material things. Your life is more important than just your possessions. But we're living in a world today where possessions are everything. We're living in a world where the quality of life is measured based on the material possessions that you have. Now, Jesus also said that the body is more important than clothing. What he's saying here is that health is more important than fashion. Yet people, they spend so much on fashion and they treat their bodies so poorly. Jesus wants you not to be worrying about superficial things such as your status and your image and the latest trends and what others are perceiving about you. This is what we call self-occupation. If you're occupied with all the superficial things of this natural world and self, rather Jesus wants you to put things in their right order, in the right priority. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. The life and the body come before possessions and fashion. That's the order. That's the priority that Jesus is saying here in verse 25. Put your life and your body before possessions and fashions, my friend. People, they're so stressed about possessions and their appearances today. Look, it goes on to say in verse 26, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they. You know, there were two birds and they were pe perched on a street sign. They were watching people rushing and stressing and they were worried and they were anxious. One bird says, why are all these people stressed? And the other bird replies, maybe they don't have a heavenly father like we do. Say to yourself, I'm better than a bird. Say it, I'm better than a bird. That's what Jesus is saying in verse 26. The birds, they're not worrying, they're not stressing. Yet the Father feeds and looks after them. Whereas people who are created in the very image and the likeness of God, 
They're stressing and worrying. Hey, birds, they're never worrying about anything. They're always singing. They'll sing in the rain. They'll sing in the hail. They'll sing in sunshine. God says, don't worry about your life. In fact, it says, therefore, do not worry in verse 25. The therefore, it links you back to verse 24. And look at this. It says, no one, in verse 24, can serve two masters. But either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It's saying you can't serve God and you can't serve all money. You, you, you can't serve both of them. It, it means that you can't put your trust in both. It's either or. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with possessions. Just don't let them possess you. Amen? How do I know if money is starting to possess me? Well, you start pursuing after it. You start pursuing after money and you stop pursuing after God. That's how you know when money is beginning to possess me. When I pursue God, the quality of my life improves. When I start pursuing money, the quality of my life, it begins to decrease. When you have more money, you think uh, you, you can purchase a, a quality kind of life. And that's the deception of money. You end up having more money, but you have less time. You have less peace. You have less health. You have less quality time with the important things and the important people, like family and church. You know, I, I know of people who they've left a great church just to go to a job overseas. They may have left this, this quality life that they have for extra money, but when they get to the new place, there's no church there. There's no good church. There's no quality of life. And what happens is they might be earning more money, but the quality of their life, it begins to decrease. And so Jesus, he says, therefore, do not worry. You know, whether people realize it or not, worry is linked to the pursuit of money and things in the natural. The root issue, it's you see your supply coming from the natural rather than coming from the Lord. You see lack in the natural and you start worrying. Worry is just symptomatic of your looking at the natural for your supply. Yet God is able to supply super abundantly more than I can ask or think. We're in the year of the supernatural. You see, there is no lack in God's economy. But the world's economy, it, it consists of scarce resources and it's dealing in the allocation of limited resources. It's based on supply and demand. Inflation is when there's not enough supply. Stagflation or stagnation is when there's not enough demand. That's the economics in the world today. It is flawed, my friend. Just imagine feeding the 5,000 men in, with the world's economy. Just imagine feeding the 5,000 with the world's economics. We've only got five loaves and two fish. Only the most important are going to get fed. Only those with the most, the most money or the most influence are going to get fed. You know how it works in the world. But in God's economy, everyone, everyone has as much as they want. 12 baskets left over. Which economy do you want to be a part of? The world's economy, where it's based on whoever has the most or has the most influence? Or do you want to be part of God's economy, where everyone has as much as they want and there's so much more left over? There's such an abundance, my friend, in God's economy. Look at Elijah and the widow's flour and oil during a time of drought. There was no rain. But it kept supplying. Amen. Jesus turned the water into wine and it was the finest quality wine. The loaves and fish. People had as much as they wanted. You see, there's always more than enough in the kingdom of God. The Lord is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. Maybe you only want a small amount. Maybe you only want one loaf and one fish. Maybe you only need so much money per year. Maybe someone else wants a hundred loaves and a hundred fish. Maybe they want or need a million a year. Maybe they need $10 million a year because they want to bless so many. See, that's what prosperity is. 
in the kingdom of God is blessed to be a blessing. Amen. You know, don't start judging and condemning those who want a hundred loaves and a hundred fish. Don't start calling them greedy or whatever the religious words are that get used. Jesus said you can have as much as you want. Don't start qualifying it, but this, but that. You see, it's not based on religion. It's based on faith. It's based on what you can believe God for. It's based on how big a blessing that you want to be. The bigger the blessing that you want to be, well, you're going to see more and more coming into your life. It's not just about, oh, I should only have one or two loaves because I don't want to be greedy. No, have as much as you want to become a greater blessing to more and more and more people. Amen. God supplies needs, but the supply will always exceed the need. That's the kingdom of God. If you don't like that, well, you just have a religious spirit. You know, the religious spirit always attacked Jesus all the time. Who is the word? And today, the religious spirit, it still attacks the word of Jesus. It attacks the word that talks about abundance and prosperity and blessed to be a blessing and where supply is more than enough. If you want to experience God's supernatural abundance, you can't have a religious heart. You know, most religious people, they think, Most people are like themselves, and they think everyone else is just like them. But so many people who are prospering, it's because of God's supernatural abundance, but it's also because they just want to be a blessing. They want to be able to give so much of that prosperity into the work of the kingdom. Amen. They want to advance the kingdom. They want more and more people hearing the good news about the the, the goodness of Jesus. Now, a key to God's supernatural supply, it's the house of God. It's the house, the church. Uh, For us, it's Grace Revival Church. And the house and Jesus, they are one. You are the house church. The, 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 The church is the house. Jesus, he is the head. It says here in John 14, verse 2, that my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? You know, in the King James Version, it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. Listen, you are the house. You are the mansion. You are the mansion that Jesus is speaking about here. The Old Testament, that the house or the temple, it was a physical place. In the New Testament today, the church, the church is the house of God. The church is the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he makes his abode within you. He, he, you are his dwelling place. Amen. And it says, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. That is talking about you. It's talking about the millions, the billions of people who come to the Lord, becoming the house of God. They are the many, many dwelling places. As you begin to prioritize the house, you will effortlessly see the supernatural supply just coming and flowing into your life. You know, what does it mean to prioritize the house of God? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Look what it says here. It says, For after all these things the Gentiles seek, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Do you know the Gentiles, they're only interested in building their own house. They're only interested in building themselves, and they're stressing, and they're striving, and they're pursuing after money. They're pursuing after possessions and things, and and that word seek there in verse 32, it's that word epizetio. I shared that with you earlier. It's this craving. It's, it's like a person is lusting and craving after more and more. It's the person that thinks they have to do everything by themselves. It's the person that thinks, if I don't do this, well, I'm going to get nothing. And you see, church, we're, we're, we're in a year where God wants you to begin to see that his supernatural supply, his supernatural abundance is there for you. 
This year, God doesn't want you becoming like the Gentiles, becoming like unbelievers who are just putting all of their faith and all of their trust in themselves. And and it's all based on what they have to do for themselves. That's not how God wants you to believe. So this year, the year of the supernatural, he, God wants you as a believer seeking after him, seeking after his kingdom, seeking after his way, seeking his house as a source and supply. The word seek there in verse 33, it's that word zedio. And you're no longer stressing, you're no longer striving, you're restful and you're trusting in the Lord. You're just seeking first the kingdom of God. You're giving priority to God. It's, it's to meditate. It's to worship. You know, the first seek, it's always in the natural. You're, you're, you're just focused on what the natural says. You're focused on what the natural supplies and, and what the natural is providing for you. And, and it's based on what a person thinks they have to do for themselves. And if everything's good in the natural, well, you're going to be happy. But suddenly, as soon as the, the natural starts to dry up, the wells start to dry up, that there is economic famine, so to speak, the, 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 there is inflation, there is lack, people start worrying. See, worry is something that flows out of a person that is just living out of the natural. And God is saying, believers, you shouldn't be like the world because you can trust and believe in the supernatural God. That second seek, in verse 33, it's in the supernatural power of God, the supernatural supply of God. It's in the one who is doing all the supplying. You're seeking first the kingdom of God. You're seeking first Jesus. You're seeking first his word. That's what brings supernatural supply, provision, and life into your life. Jesus is the good shepherd. In Psalm 23 verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. When you're focusing on the natural, you'll be in lack, my friend. But when you're seeking first the kingdom of God and when you're seeking the good shepherd and he is your focus, you won't be in lack. This is what Jesus is saying to believers. He's saying, don't seek after those physical things in the natural like the unbelievers do. Seek after the supernatural. Seek after his kingdom where all things are being supplied for you. Church, as we close out this message, I want to apply this to us today in 2023. You know, in 2023, the world is predicting lack, it's predicting uncertainty, it's predicting famine, it's predicting inflation. It's like the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the four horsemen of the book of Revelation, where you got the white horse, which is all about divide and conquer, and that's representative of false doctrines and false believing. You got the red horse, which is all about war and terrorism. You've got the black horse, which is all about famine and economic loss, and the pale horse, death, sickness, and pandemics. You know, these four horses, they're galloping around the world today. We can just see them. And all these things, they're happening. All these bad things will happen. But listen, listen to me. Don't listen to the bad news of the world, even if it's correct, even if it does take place. Be listening to the good news about God. Amen? Be seeing the supernatural power of God bringing the supernatural supply into your life where there is no lack, where, where, where you, you're not going to experience the famines of the world. Yeah, there might be lack in the world, there might be famine, there might be poverty, but you keep looking towards the Lord your God, the, 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 the good shepherd who will bring the supernatural supply into your life. Remember, keep remembering the goodness of God. Remember the loaves and fishes. And how they had as much as they wanted. Remember, Elisha and the widow's oil, how it never ran dry throughout the full duration of that drought. Remember Joseph in the seven years of drought and how there was so much abundance. There was such an abundance. And they were so blessed, they were able to be a blessing to so many others. Remember Isaac sowing in a time of famine. And he, re- and he received a hundredfold return even in that same year. Remember Israel in the wilderness. They were receiving fresh manna every single day. In Luke 5, verse 4 and 6, Jesus, he's been speaking to his disciples and he says to them, let down your nets. And Peter replies, but we caught nothing all night. The disciples, 
they were kind of like people in the world, trying to deal, trying to fend for themselves and do things in their own effort and do things in their own strength. And they'd been out all night stressing and striving. But it says we caught nothing. So important that you don't let your butt get in the way of God's supernatural supply. Here's the key. Nevertheless, at your word. That's what Peter said. He said, nevertheless, at your word. And then they caught a supernatural catch. Church, you're going to experience some of the, the, the lack. You're going to go through the same famine that the world goes through. You're going to see it. You're going to, be, you're going to experience it. But you've got to be looking to Jesus. And you've got to be listening to what he says. He says, let down your nets. Nevertheless, at your word, it's about believing and seeing Jesus as the one who provides. And that's how you'll reap these supernatural catches, my friend. The way to receive a net-breaking supernatural catch is by replacing your but, 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 with the word of God. God demonstrates this again and again through his ability to provide for us supernaturally in times and in seasons of lack. Church, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not look to the wealth. Do not look to the health. Do not look to the physical needs itself. Just keep looking to the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Don't live life the way the world lives life, where as the Gentiles seek, they're stressing and they're striving. Live like Mary was at the feet of Jesus. She just put herself in that place where she was hearing Jesus, feeding on his words. Jesus, he is the living well, the living well that never runs dry. He is the abundant vine. Amen. And the life keeps flowing from him into you. He's the vine and you are the branches. All you have to do is just keep resting in Jesus and allow his life to flow into you. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the bread of life. Amen. He is the light. Let me pray for your church. Lord, I just thank you for the people of Grace Revival Church. I thank you, Lord, that they're blessed. They're the head and they're not the tail. And Lord, regardless of what is happening in the world, regardless of the lack, regardless of the famines, regardless of the, the, the news that we're hearing around the world today, Lord, we continue to put our faith and we continue to put our trust in you. We thank you that you are our good shepherd and we shall not be in lack. We thank you that you'll provide for all of these areas in our lives. We thank you that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the blessing upon our people as they head into Chinese New Year, Lord God, and they're, they're visiting their families and they're spending time. Lord, I'm praying that they are blessed to be a blessing. They're a blessing in their households. They're a blessing amongst their friends. And Lord, as we go throughout this year, 2023, that we will be such a blessing to the people around us. We'll be a blessing in this city in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Church, just keep your heads bowed. I just want to pray one more prayer. This is a prayer just to receive Jesus into your life. What a way to begin Chinese New Year. And Jesus, he went to the cross pay the price for all of humanity's sin. In fact, the Bible says that he went there to take upon himself all of humanity's sin and that he would exchange that sin for his righteousness. And when Jesus hung upon that cross and his blood was spilled, it was for the forgiveness of sins so that every person could receive the forgiveness of sin. And when we just call upon the name of Jesus and we pray this prayer that I'm going to lead you in, what you're doing is receiving the forgiveness of God, receiving the gift of his righteousness so that you can become a son and daughter of God. Amen. So church, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to bow your head. And I just want you to pray this prayer from your heart right now. Dear Lord God, I thank you for Jesus and what he did for me upon the cross. I thank you that he took my sin and gave me his gift of righteousness. 
He forgave me through his blood so that I could become son of God, daughter of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Amen. Amen. I love how we are all pointed today to the one true source of supernatural supply, which is God's grace. And His name is Jesus. And come to think of it, as we are just doing what we are doing right now, valuing God's Word, valuing His house, and seeing the grace of Christ, everything that we are learning, practicing, and being reminded of week after week here in our church, as we just continue to see and value all that is Jesus, His abundance will just overtake us everywhere. So thank you, Pastor Wayne, for always encouraging us with these powerful messages. And if you have prayed and accepted Christ, let us know we want to be able to give a salvation booklet to help you understand a bit more about your decision. Now, church, let me just pray for you as we come to a close. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. Thank you, Father God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We treasure and value your word that you have spoken to us. Your word is true. Your word is alive and active. Your word is now. Your word is what's taking roots in our hearts and bearing fruits in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's protected in the hearts of every person who have heard and receive it. I declare your grace and favor upon every household represented in Grace Revival Church. Our people are deeply loved, highly favored, and greatly blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, church, have a blessed week. This coming Sunday, we are back at Club One. Invite your friends and family. Look forward to see you there. Have a fun week with all the celebrations. Much love to you all. watching Grace Revival Church online service. We hope you enjoyed the message and look forward to having you join us next time. God bless you. Yeah.